So we're talking here about it's so important to be modulating us, uh, us health nuts and health aficionados are trying to modulate our diet, eat as healthy as we can. But at the same time, we're trying to eat what we eat and how much we eat is all part of the process. And now I can't advance my slides. So there it goes. Now I can. So the so what I'm saying here is just imagine this for a minute. If I'm eating more calories, let's say I'm eating 300 calories, one cookie or a bagel extra each day that I shouldn't be eating. Let's say my basal metabolic rate without exercise is 1,500 calories a day, but I eat 1,700 calories a day. Well, is that an 100 calories times 350 days a year? And since a pound of fat on your body is about 3,500 calories, so if I ate 200 calories a day extra, you would expect a 20 pound weight gain after a year, but it doesn't cause a 20 pound weight gain. It only causes a 10 pound weight gain because what happens when you overshoot calories is your metabolism is speeded up. Your body temperature gets higher. Your calories spent through breathing is, um, is enhanced. I mean, it's slowed down. Yeah, it's enhanced, excuse me. And you have an enhanced um, respiratory quotient to your, your um, speeding up, you're low, running your body temperature higher and you're running your thyroid higher. And keep in mind, running your, the, the engine in a higher furnace, turning the furnace hotter and revving the car to run faster burns it, it burns it out faster. We want to run our furnace slower. Matter of fact, in the normal range of thyroid function of free T4, we have more lifespan and lower rates of cardiac arrhythmia and cardiovascular death in the bottom half of the normal range compared to the top half of the normal range. So we want to have a moderately slow thyroid function. We want our body temperature to be lower, not higher. And for every, so what I'm saying right now is that people are gaining weight aren't just eating a little extra calories. They're eating a lot of extra calories they didn't need because all those calories aren't even putting fat on their body. If they became fat, they're eating a huge amount of calories more than they really needed. And the goal to a long life is not to have extra calories, which is to eat the minimum of what we need without getting too thin to modulate our weight. So the less we eat, the longer we live without getting too thin, but if you can get too thin, it wouldn't be, that wouldn't be favorable either. I'm not saying become anorexic. And that's why we say moderate caloric restriction, not severe caloric restriction. We want to moderately caloric restrict. So we're not going around hungry all the time, but we're eating enough bulk, enough fiber and enough nutrients to be able to eat when we're hungry and not eat when we're not hungry. And they always say hunger is the best sauce because one of those symptoms of hunger is it enhances taste sensation. And we become over time instinctually desirous of the right amount of calories and even the, the right foods. So to reiterate what I've said so far, to slow the aging process, we're, in, we're eating a lower calorie, high nutrient diet. And the more nutrients and fiber we eat with better quality food, the less calories we're going to desire. And that's going to reduce inflammation, suppress genetic alterations, and slow the metabolic rate, which is favorable because the metabolic rate is the rate at which we're aging. We want it so if I ate, if I undershoot my calories, I don't just lose weight, my metabolism slows, which then stabilizes my stem cells from aging and helps maintain telomere length and stem cell function for later in life when they're more utilized. So, and of course, and of course, um, it increases the ability of the body to detoxify and heal and repair and reduce free radical production. And that leads us to this concept of intermittent fasting or time-restricted eating. And I'm saying the circadian rhythms, and since we're trying, and our, and our need for calories decreases later in the day in the, in the evening when we're not active, but he, most healing takes place and most repair Healing and repair. So the anti-aging phenomena is enhanced during sleep. And the enhancement of activity of the anti-aging phenomenon occurs during sleep when you're not digesting food the best. So sleeping when your body's not digesting. So not sleeping on a full stomach, but sleeping on an empty stomach is the way we live longer. And that means we're trying to eat lighter at night and finish dinner earlier. So let's say I'm finished dinner by 5, 30, 6 o'clock, and I go to bed at 10, when I, have, when I ate light enough, so by 10 o'clock, I'm going to bed and I can um, not on a full stomach, as opposed to some people's um, social and, and pattern of living is they're likely to eat a late dinner at 8 o'clock at night, 9 o'clock at night, 
where they keep eating or snacking till the evening and they go to bed in a full stomach. And that's one of the worst things you can do if you're looking to extend human longevity. And if you're a health aficionado and a longevity aficionado like me, you know, what in my and a lot of people that I that I'm teaching to, then you really want to consume your calories earlier in the day and reduce your calories later in the day and make a delicious dinner, but a lighter dinner and earlier. So we want to increase that. Um, so when you eat and how much you eat um, play a role here. Here's a study where they gave people moderate caloric restriction, about 14% reduction in calories compared to what they were eating over a two-year period, published in the journal Science. And it showed a tremendous increase in health and actually anti-aging phenomena. And I'm making this most ridiculous claim and saying the body can age backwards. How can you age backwards? That's so stupid, Dr. Furman, you know. But but no, we see, we measure those telomeres and methylation defects and epigenetic changes and do those some of those those tests on long, those longevity testing. And we can find that after people adopt this program, they come to my retreat for the few months and they test it. If we test them later on, they see that their biological age has gotten has gone lower. And like that we're showing here in this study published in the Science Journal is that when people calorically restricted with good with adequate nutrition it found it increased immune function of the t cells tissue regenerated stem cells regenerated telomeres went longer reduced menstrual pain enhanced in other words they found um, findings that reflected aging backwards with caloric restriction now, in addition to eating right, and you know I recommend a diet high in natural and colorful plants, a huge assortment of colorful plant foods, because I'm saying here, of course, that, that processed foods and like white flour and other ultra-processed foods don't contain a significant micronutrient load. But I'm also saying that animal products like chicken does not contain a significant load of micronutrients and it doesn't have vitamins, a high intake of vitamins and phytochemicals and antioxidants. So both the animal products and the processed foods are relatively low in nutrients. So we're trying to increase our exposure to lifespan enhancing nutrients by eating more colorful plants. But at the same time, diet's not everything because getting sleep is important, getting regular exercise is important, having emotional poise and being happy is all these things are important. But so is our exposure to xenobiotics, which means that, which means there are things that are not part of the human body.